everyone, Dr. Biology here, and this video is about the role of biotechnology in food production. So it's related to looking at food security and the previous video related to intensive farming. But this is more about um, how biotechnology could maybe help us with food security and increasing the amount of food that we produce. So let's do a quick spec check. OK, so it says you should be able to describe and explain some possible biotechnical and agricultural solutions. So those two ones we're going to talk about today is using uh, something called mycoprotein, uh, better known to you as corn, uh, which is a meat, uh, an alternative to meat. And we're going to look a bit, a bit at genetic modification. Uh, so I'm going to look at GM crops and how they can provide more food um, or food with an improved nutritional value. I'm not going to cover, though, uh, GM bacterium producing human insulin. That's uh, in another topic related to genetic engineering. Uh, for my students, that will be uh, one of the final topics you do in year 11. So uh, however, I'm sure Dr. Biology will uh, be doing a video on human insulin quite soon. In certain um, parts of society, there is a very uh, big interest in um, not eating as much meat or fish, and in fact, going vegetarian or even vegan. So uh, one of these alternatives is called mycoprotein. So mycoprotein is a fungus, fusarium, uh, and it's grown in large fermenter vats with glucose syrup as a food source. So fermenters can grow large quantities and fungal biomass is, can be harvested, purified and dried to make mycoprotein. And it's a very high protein alternative to meat. It's also low in fat as well. You might know mycoprotein as a tra its trade name, which is called corn, but obviously there are other uh, mycoproteins uh, available. In your exam, they might want you to talk about how they actually make mycoprotein. So uh, as you can see in the picture here, this is called a fermenter. And what they do is that they add uh, the fusarium in with a food source, usually glucose syrup, and they control the conditions inside the fermenter. So for example, pH and temperature are maintained at an optimum. That's to reduce the uh, enzymes being denatured. Uh, they can control the temperature by a water jacket that surrounds the fermenter, which is cold water because the fusarium will respire and re heat will be released. Um, it then adds sterile oxygen to make sure that aerobic respiration can occur. Um, and then it's all mixed with the stirring paddles to ensure oxygen and nutrients are equally distributed. And then um, at the end of the process, they can actually uh, remove at the bottom of the fermenter, remove the uh, mycoprotein. Second type of biotechnology is genetically modified crops. And again, you will, you will come, um, oh, not very good today. Take two. The second example I'm going to talk about is genetically modified crops. Um, this topic will come up in a later topic related to variation, inheritance and genetics, but I'm going to cover it now. So GM crops are made by transferring a useful gene from one organism to another. Now, it could potentially increase the amount of food um, you can design crops that are going to be resistant to pests and diseases. They could be developed uh, to grow in areas of low rainfall as well. Um, people in developing countries often lack nutrients in their diet. And scientists have produced, um, for example, a rice plant called golden rice that produces a chemical that can be converted into vitamin A in the body. However, with new technology, there are concerns and genetically modified crops at the moment in this country are not grown in the field. They can be grown in a greenhouse, um, whereas other countries will grow genetically modified crops. And the, re the three main reasons why, why people might be concerned is the long term effects on natural ecosystems are not fully um, understood in, if the um, 
artificial gene or the uh, new gene infects natural populations. GM crops are made infertile. So that means farmers need to buy new seed from the same company each year. Um, some people argue that we need to tackle poverty first as many can't afford to buy this new technology. So as I said, this will be covered later in the spec and there'll be other videos related to genetic modification. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.